Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. This video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos because normally when I publish videos they are of course on something guitar or at least music related so they're going to be on learning something on guitar like uh, uh, learning some arpeggios or a jazz standard or uh, chord voicing so it's about explaining harmony and understanding reharmonization and that kind of stuff. I'm very lucky because I have all of you guys checking out my videos. I have a lot of subscribers to my channel. And I think if you know a little bit about how I got started playing jazz and how I got to where I am now, uh, then you understand a little bit better the videos that I make and why I teach the way I do and also why I make videos in the first place. Uh, because I think that's also something that's kind of important in how I work and why I'm setting aside all this time to making videos. I started with jazz kind of late. Uh, because I didn't really start listening to and trying to play jazz uh, until I was 22, I think. Uh, at the time I was studying at the university in Aarhus. Uh, I was studying mathematics and computer science. And um, so the thing is, I'm from Denmark and Aarhus is in Denmark. And um, I'm from a small town called Skern in Denmark. And uh, where I grew up, when I finished high school, uh, I decided that, uh, or I had this discussion going with my parents actually about whether I should try to get into the conservatory uh, for classical guitar. And uh, in hindsight, probably I wasn't good enough. And also for the things that I like about music, it's a good thing that I never did that. My parents thought I should get a more normal education and mathematics was a, certainly a better choice. So I went with that and because my parents are nice people, they said, well, you don't have to give up on guitar. You can still play, uh, you can still have lessons. And uh, uh, I was also getting money to go on summer camps for uh, music. So while I was at the university, I was still having guitar lessons and I now had the chance to get electric guitar lessons because I hadn't had that before. You couldn't get that uh, in the town that I was from. And um, I also went to these summer camps where I, I got to uh, spend sort of a few weeks every summer really intensely is playing a lot and I got into some bands and started playing uh, both in a cover band and in a band making uh, making our own music. Uh, most of that was rock. At the time I was really listening a lot to uh, sort of Stevie Ray Vaughan, Hendrix, uh, Cream Era, Clapton, uh, a lot of blues, like really blues like Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf. Those were the kind of things I was checking, I was checking out mostly the contemporary things uh, for, for that was like Race Against the Machine, Pearl Jam um, and stuff like that. So those were the things I was really interested in. And I was, uh, of course, playing in these bands and, and that was a lot of fun, got to play with a lot of people. And a lot of my friends were um, starting to get, to talk about how they were also listening to, especially fusion jazz. Uh, and also that was a natural development because what I also started to find out was that what I really liked was one, playing with other people, and two, um, improvising. So improvising was something that I thought was very interesting, and that was something I wanted to spend a lot of time doing, uh, also in, in the bands that I was playing in. And that probably also came out of Hendrix, actually, because he improvises quite a lot. I was then trying to sort of figure out, because I was meeting all these people who were listening to fusion music, and then I got tapes from them of uh, records, and I also um, borrowed stuff on the public library. Um, and was just trying to find some stuff that I liked. And in general, uh, sort of, of course, this was in 94, 5, that period, I think. And um, in general, there wasn't any, um, I mean, fusion didn't sound like the other music I was listening to. It was much more uh, slick and much more like produced pop. And it sounded actually, it sounds more like Steely Dan and Toto, which was things that I didn't really like that much. So I couldn't find any fusion that I really liked. And one day I was checking out some stuff. I was at the library looking at the fusion section and just seeing if I recognized any names, some stuff that I didn't check out. And of course, the jazz section is right next to it. And then I just saw, I think it was a Charlie Parker CD. And I knew the name, Charlie Parker, but I just never I never heard any of his music. And I, I took up this, I picked up the CD and looked at it and I thought, well, I need to know what this is because he's famous and I never heard it. And I have no idea what it, what, what it sounds like. And then right next to it was a Coltrane CD, because that's, uh, that's of course, also in that section. So I got that as well. And uh, the Parker CD was a compilation of uh, some sting things that he did, also some of the famous uh, tunes, like Now's the Time. And there was, especially I remember there was like a, a slow blues called Casey Blues, and the Lover Man was on there. And I didn't really know anything about that, but because it was blues, and he really plays blues sometimes, then 
I could that I could really relate to that. And I, and then there were these bits in between that I didn't understand, and I was very intrigued with what was that about, and how does that work, and and how do you play that? And of course, I tried to mimic it, and I could mimic the blues things, but I couldn't. The other things were too difficult to figure out for me at the time. Um, so I couldn't really do that. And that was really sort of the start of, okay, this is much more interesting than the fusion music because whenever I listened to David Sanborn then, uh, or whatever I got on tape, then I always felt like they took the whole record and, and then put chorus on it and I couldn't use, do anything with it. The Parker stuff was very interesting, so I started checking that out. Uh, I also remember listening, because, and that's why I remember that those two were at the same time because I also borrowed a Coltrane album called The Avant-Garde which is an album with uh, Don Cherry and then a rhythm section, so like, like no piano. And then I think that's also just free jazz, actually. I think I listened to it once and then I was like, I have no idea what's going on. And uh, and then I just brought that back. But the Parker thing really stayed with me and I started checking that out and also looking in those directions for, for more music. Uh, and I was asking my teachers about this. And even though I didn't have a jazz teacher, um, I. I was told to, to uh, get a hold of some Wes Montgomery and some Charlie Christian. Uh, and then I could figure out some of the Charlie Christian. I still didn't know what a standard was. I learned some solos by ear, but I didn't know how to play the song. The same with Wes Montgomery, where I, I bought a compilation from Wes, uh, so sort of some Verve compilation, where there's a lot of stuff with strings on it that I really didn't like. And then there's a lot of stuff with with just a trio or with organ, which was great, you know. So so there was very mixed and I checked out some things, but I, I still, I could hardly figure out like when, when it said blues, I had trouble hearing. I could hear it was blues, but I couldn't really figure it out. It was all very sort of, sort of not knowing what was going on and, and just trying to figure it out really by ear uh, and probably failing half the time. So I did that and then in the summer courses, that I went to. So I went to these two week summer courses that were in Denmark also. Then I met a lot of people who were also using the summer courses also as part of a preparatory thing for conservatory. And of course, some of those were, were already, some of these people were really good players already and some of them were, were not uh, strong. And that made me realize that, that maybe I could try that as well. What I decided to do was that instead of getting a master's degree at the university, so not becoming a master's in mathematics, I would do a bachelor degree. Uh, which meant I could sort of finish it within a year. Also because I realized that if I was to continue with my master's degree, I would be a high school teacher by the age of 24. And that that, that seemed like a very scary thought at the time. So uh, I figured, well, I'll just try the guitar thing. I can always return to studying mathematics if that's what I want to do. So I finished that and, and uh, still had almost no clue on what to do with, with playing jazz. I think I still didn't figure out what a standard was. I had discovered that some Schofield that I really liked that, uh, and I, that was flat out that album where he plays um, Secret Love. I'd learned some of that also. I was surprised that he didn't write it himself, but uh, that was again this thing with not knowing what a standard was. And then uh, after university, I enrolled in in this Danish phenomenon called a folk high school. So I was going to a folk high school where you actually live at the school, and then you're doing some classes, and, and usually the, that's a course that takes like half a year or a year or something. This was one of the longer courses, it was like eight months long, and I was just playing jazz pretty much every day. And uh, since I decided that I really wanted to uh, to become a guitar player, I knew, I decided that the only thing I, had, I could do was to just work really hard, practice really a lot, and learn as much as possible. That was sort of the idea. So that was what I was doing, just always practicing and then skipping as much as, if there was something that was not directly jazz, I was always trying to not do it and just for the rest, work on, on, on playing guitar and getting better at that. And um, that's also where I met Søren, uh, the saxophone player from, from uh, Trappin, in fact, uh, who I know that long already. So we did that course. I think at the end of it, I could sort of play a standard. I'd, I'd learned a lot. I had, had some lessons with a jazz guitar player that helped a lot. Uh, but I still wasn't at the point where I could just play over a standard and really improvise. There was always these things that I didn't really, I hadn't figured it out yet really how it worked. And um, I don't think I had the ears to just sort of fake it. So I was still working and then I decided to move to Copenhagen. Actually, both me and Søren decided to move to Copenhagen. We did an entrance exam for, for this preparatory school in Copenhagen. And, uh, and then we moved over there. Again, I think we both had the idea that, okay, if we want to play music, we just have to work as hard as we possibly can to get as good as we possibly can. And that's the only thing that's gonna work. And we both were on on that, so we helped each other. We did a lot of ear training together. We, we played a lot together. 
in Copenhagen, I had, had lessons from a lot of good players, actually, and a lot of good teachers also. So I learned really a lot. And some of the things that I learned, I actually didn't realize how much I'd learned till later. But I had really, really, really solid lessons there. And um, the preparatory school itself was not that good. But there were some teachers that were really, uh, really good and really inspiring. And when I was at the school, I also met a bass player who also had that mentality that what it was all about was just playing a lot of music and getting better. And uh, with him, I decided that uh, he talked about playing in the street in Copenhagen uh, because we just needed to play as much as possible. We couldn't get any gigs uh, and we didn't want to only spend time practicing. We spent a lot of time at his place practicing uh, standards. So we learned to play, I think, two or three standards. And then when we could play those, I got a, an amp that could take uh, batteries. And, um, and then we just started playing in the street. And that really helped a lot because if you're playing that much and if you can only play three standards, then you make sure to learn a fourth one. You keep on going. And uh, in that way, I actually built a repertoire of standards. So I started playing a lot and also we started to do some gigs uh, together in different places. And I earned really a lot of experience with that and, and just got a lot better at playing and, and holding my own because it's only with a bass player. So, so you need to play quite strong to, you can't lean on a piano player and stuff. Like that. I think that was a very healthy experience. And at the same time, when I was playing with him at the school where, I, where we were, uh, there were people who were connected to the conservatory in The Hague. So they talked about going there because one of the uh, teachers that would come there as guest teachers was uh, Barry Harris. I'm, probably you've seen some of the videos of Barry Harris. I'll try and link to some of them actually, where he's teaching at the conservatory in The Hague. And in those workshops, um, I learned a lot of stuff about, uh, about bebop and stuff, but I also just saw the conservatory and I got to know a lot of the other Danish people who were studying there. Around the same time, I was applying for the conservatory in Copenhagen. Uh, but the difference between Copenhagen and uh, The Hague was that in Copenhagen, they don't take everybody who's good enough. They just take a few people every year. What they told me was that I passed my, my exam in the sense that I was probably good enough to do the education, but I was probably too old and, and I was not the best. And it was like they took two and there were 50 some people applying. It was a bit uh, pointless to, to keep on trying to do that. At least that was how I felt about it. I'm not sure if that actually was the case, but that was, that was how it came across to me when I talked to the guy on the phone who was telling me about how the exam had, had gone. So I needed to do something else. And I was looking at how many savings I had and I could do, I didn't even check, but I could do almost no time at Berkeley or I could do an entire education in The Hague. So that seemed logical then to just uh, do an entrance exam in The Hague. And we got accepted in The Hague and we moved to, to The Hague to study. And um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about my study, I guess. I think some of the things that I really emphasized when I was at the conservatory was because I came out of this thing with playing in the street and I already had a, a decent repertoire of standards, I, um, I was really trying to get to play as much as possible with as many people as I possibly could. I think that, that was what I, well, that was what I loved to do really. And also that was where I would learn the most, I think. And that was true also. I learned a lot from a lot of people uh, playing here. So that was always my mindset. And at the same time, I was also, I guess I was a bit lucky because I was already a bit older, so I already had some experience studying, uh, which made it easier for me to study, I think, in many ways. And also because I could, um, probably quite efficiently study things uh, just from being used to the mathematics study and, and working on my own and practicing a lot. That was maybe sort of an advantage for me. I was studying and then I graduated after six years at that time. So actually I got accepted to the conservatory in uh, so 1998 and moved there. And then in 2004, I graduated from the conservatory. By then uh, I'd already built up a network of people that I was playing with the uh, last three years of my study because I already spent some of my study finance from Denmark because in Denmark you get a certain amount of money for studying and I've spent some of it on my mathematics study so halfway through my study I, I didn't have any more of that and uh, from then on I was actually supporting myself um, just by playing and the first year was was a bit heavy but uh, for the rest, I managed, and then the last six months of my study, I got a teaching job also. So I had all these these uh, people that I knew. I had a network of people that I that I was gigging with on a regular basis, small projects, and, and, and also some some bigger projects. We did a lot of stuff, um, just playing around, playing concerts in in uh, mostly just the Netherlands and Belgium and and, and Germany a bit. Uh, and once in a while also in Denmark. Then I'm gonna skip ahead a bit because otherwise it's gonna, gonna get way too long. So I was also doing that and I started to teach a bit more. So I just 
had the foundation of the teaching with the two days a week and for the rest I was playing a lot and doing a lot of stuff and then around 2014 when I started making videos I had my music school teaching job and I was teaching but mo mostly what I'm teaching there is of course pop and rock music and not really any jazz and um, the combination of that because I actually kind of felt like I wanted to teach more jazz the combination of that and then also that I realized that what was getting the most visits on my website was uh, my transcriptions. It made me think, well, I can maybe make some lessons and then put them on my website and then uh, that's fun to do. Well, I have some topics that I can talk about that apparently nobody seems to be talking about. So I'll just start talking about that and, uh, and, and write some articles on it and put them on my website and then see what happens. And then I figured out that I could share my, I actually post my articles on Ultimate Guitar which you may know as a huge uh, tab website that still exists, of, uh, of course. They got really well received, actually, surprisingly enough, because they're not really the target audience for Ultimate Guitar is not really interested in, in the kind of things that I do listens on. There, I sort of, in, on the internet, I got to know uh, somebody who had a huge impact on, on my whole internet career, which was uh, Chris Super, who you might know uh, for his YouTube channel. He has a huge YouTube channel where he does a lot of covers of... Uh, of uh, rock solos and, and metal solos uh, and he was a really nice guy and he, he said well he was talking about how he liked the lessons and uh, he said well you he, you really need to, to start making videos instead of just writing articles that works a lot better you reach more people that's much better for you and I was just making the videos at the time really uh, no I wasn't actually making videos I was just making the articles because I thought it was fun and also to drive some traffic to my website which I really didn't know what I wanted to do with but I just was just sort of experimenting a bit next to all the other things I was doing and really I just liked to do the lessons but I was really cautious about it because I didn't I really don't feel comfortable on camera uh, I feel more comfortable now on camera but it's still difficult you can take check out some of the first videos I did uh, then you can see that also of course because you have to learn to, to do that hi guys in today's lesson I want to talk about shell voicings but I started, I, I, in the end I started just making the videos because I thought, well, okay, there are a few topics that nobody talks about that are really useful if you want to get into jazz or if you just want to experiment with chords with extensions or using arpeggios. You know, I learned it in certain ways and I think some ways are more practical than others and they're not really being taught. So I had all these things that I wanted to sort of talk about and that nobody seemed to be talking about and I thought that's a pity because you can make interesting music with it and it's just fun to to mess around with so I'll just start slowly making lessons and all these things and um, and see what happens and again I was posting these videos on Ultimate Guitar also and they got really well received and that really helped a lot actually that I could just post them there and then of course I got the the, um, the usual amount of trolling you get on on, on, uh, on Ultimate Guitar from people but uh, it's that kind of place I also got some feedback and I got a, some exposure so I could sort of start somewhere uh, Chris recommended me on his channel at that time. That was also a huge thing for me, actually, which is, which is also really cool. And then I just decided, well, I'm going to try and make videos on a regular basis because that's what works. Uh, and I have enough stuff that I can make videos on, and I'm just having fun with it. I'm just using my phone. And I think that's actually still what I'm doing. Of course, I'm not using my phone anymore, but uh, I am still just trying to see if I can make some lessons on some topics that um, that I find interesting and that I also know because of course in the meantime so in 2014 I started making the videos and that became a thing and, and, and uh, I started to gather a small following which has, of course has grown quite a lot since then. I also got hired to teach at the School for Young Talent at the conservatory and now I'm doing several things at the conservatory as well. So I actually started playing and teaching more jazz in general and that's also been something that I've been able to work more with the music that I really want to work with, which is jazz. I, I mean, I don't mind teaching all the other things. I think it's fun teaching Metallica to kids and stuff like that, or uh, Coldplay and all those things, that, that's fine. But of course, for myself, jazz is what I do, and that's what I love to play. So that's what I want to work on. And, and then I also want to give the people a chance who, like me, start a little bit later, because most of the people who start playing jazz will get into it probably earlier than, than what I do. Uh, or maybe also not, I don't know actually, because I don't know when people start playing jazz, but I had the, I always had the idea that I started kind of late and that I had to work really hard to sort of make up for that fact. And then you need to be sort of very rational in how you teach and you have to sort of just figure out, okay, 
uh, think about what you're doing, try to analyze what is happening. That goes for actually any aspect of music. I, I do truly believe that you can break down 99% uh, of everything you want to work on with uh, with playing jazz music or playing an instrument and then just train it. What always has to happen is you need to train yourself to be able to hear it and then you can work with it and you can train the ability to fix it or change it or work with it. And of course, some of this takes very long to check out, but at the same time, it's, it's what we do, you know, it, it's, that's part of what we're doing and it is great fun to just explore all these things. The reason why I made so many videos on different types of arpeggios is because I always like it when I can find a new arpeggio and I can get a new melody out of it. That in itself is enough for me. That's something that I can sort of directly take this small idea and put that into music in different places. And because it's a melody, it's not only just an arpeggio, it is really a sound that I can make music with. And that's, that's what I do. So that's how I'm thinking about it. And then I just need to make lessons where I try to uh, sort of present the material and then maybe give you some ideas on how you can work on getting the material into your ears and your fingers. And then just some examples of how you use it. I do think a lot in these steps that you have sort of a very basic part where you need to just know what it is. Then you need to sort of figure out how to play it. Uh, and then you need to spend a lot of time actually practice. And that's always a surprising amount of time you need to practice to get it into your playing and to make it something that you just have as part of your vocabulary. And that has been sort of the building block of most of my lessons that I've worked on with that. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm actually trying to take all these different topics and also some of the topics that you guys come with and also some stuff that actually when you guys talk about it, then I start checking it out and then I learn something and then I can put that in a lesson that has happened as well. Um, because I think there is sort of the, there is a bit of scientist in, in what I do, that I just explore things and, and figure out what I can do with them and then try and use that in my own playing and also in, in the videos that I make. Mostly it's about finding a clear way of learning it because I find that that's something that's still kind of, it's actually missing quite a lot in jazz education as a whole probably, but it certainly can get better on the internet because there it's really messy and, and half the time it's being taught by people who are having trouble with it themselves and who, who maybe don't have a complete understanding of what they're teaching. Uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mostly it's just because there's all this stuff that I know a lot of things about and I can just, well, I don't just press record and talk about it like I'm doing now, but that is really the thing that I like to do is just talk a little bit about them so that you can go and mess around with them and discover them for yourself. I think that's, that's what's fun about playing jazz guitar because we don't play jazz guitar only to play concerts. We play jazz guitar because we love to practice and we love to jam with other people. And that's the, the thing that I want to uh, help you guys with uh, and mostly I actually want to do that because that's the thing I'm doing myself that's the thing that I love to do I just like to mess around with with my instrument and get better at it and and, and figure out things that's the reason why I'm making the videos in the end uh, at least that's the reason why I keep making them I'm not sure if it was the reason why I started I think the, the start was just an experiment but when I think about it now then that's why I'm making videos um, and that's also why it's so great that there are a lot of other guys like, like you who are watching this video, especially if you made it this far in the video, because I'm not sure how long it is. That means that you're also just interested in, in this process of learning and, um, and checking out all the guitar stuff. And that's, that's the fun bit. And uh, that's what this channel is really about for me, I think, more than anything else. That's the story of how I got into jazz um, shortly and with a skipping around a bit. But... Um, Hopefully it's something you find useful. And of course, if you have any questions on how I learned something or, uh, or anything else actually they want to ask me, then you can just leave me a comment because of course there are a lot of holes in my story here. It's not that well rehearsed. Let me know about that. And for the rest, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and uh, thank you for checking out all my videos. And uh, there's a new lesson on Thursday. Um, I'm not sure what, which one is going to be yet, but uh, there is one for sure. So I'll see you then.